The solo leveling anime is here and it is so much beyond my expectations. It was incredible. The animation looked pretty much flawless in this and they played true to the beloved manhwa, which is a Korean manga called Solo Leveling. If you haven't read it, it's such a delight to read. It's just so much fun. And I was a little bit worried about how well they're gonna be able to adapt it. The studio is A1 Pictures who does Sword Art Online and Fairy Tale, but oh my gosh, I guess because this is a huge IP, it has a huge fan base. They went all out. I mean, look at some of these animations. They are beautiful. The artistic design is incredibly clean and the voice acting was good. Everything about it was good. I have zero complaints. This is the new ultra hype anime. I'm going to go through this episode and I'm going to break it down for you and explain the series if you don't know it yet. But wow, guys, I'm flabbergasted. This is it. This is so good. Without further ado, I'm your host, Mastar. Please leave a like, thumbs up, and comment down below what you thought about the first episode and how much you enjoyed it. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm and it promotes the channel more. So the story of solo leveling takes place in a world very similar to One Punch Man. You have different ranked heroes, monsters that are invading, magical weaponry, and so forth. Basically 10 years ago, these portals to other dimensions started popping up on Earth. And with these portals, people started to awaken their superpowers, their special abilities. Now, different than a lot of other stories, you actually cannot get any stronger in solo leveling. Once you awaken, you're given a rank, with E being the lowest and S rank being the highest, similar to One Punch Man. And while you can't improve, you cannot upgrade, you cannot level up, you can buy magical weaponry to get stronger in that sense. So with higher levels of gear, better weapons and armor and artifacts, you can get stronger in that sense, but you yourself cannot increase your abilities anymore, making the S rank heroes far superior than everyone else. And we can see this with the opening sequence as we see a bunch of hunters, which are the heroes of the story, taking on these ant monsters. They're getting completely decimated until the S rank heroes arrive and make easy work of these ant creatures. Features. So the world building in episode one is excellent. The pacing is excellent. They lay out all of the plans for the world and the main character who we get introduced to in a little bit, who is the weakest hero in the world. He's an E rank. He always gets injured and he can't even really collect any of the magical items, which they're all going into hunt for. So as these heroes go through the portals and they defeat the dungeon, they get all sorts of crystals and artifacts, which are worth a lot of money. They provide a clean power source, far more clean than nuclear or any other source of energy. So the main character, Sung Jing Wu, as well as many of the other hunters, this is their job. This is the best way that they can make money. And we learn in the first episode that Sung, the main character, his mom is sick and he's trying to pay her hospital bills. So they established that the main character is the weakest hero, but he's got a big, good heart. He keeps fighting. He keeps going in these dungeons and almost dying just so he can accrue a little bit of money to help support his family. So he goes into a D rank gate with a bunch of other hunters who essentially carry him. They, they go in these hunting parties and Sung, as well as the other weak hunters, they kind of tag along and get carried in the hopes that they can acquire a one little piece of weaponry or some gems so that they can get stronger. But we see that Sung, in just a simple fight, he's getting wrecked, he gets stabbed, and he would have died if it wasn't for another hunter healing him. Sung is the outcast, and although the other hunters let him tag along, they make lots of fun of him, but he doesn't really seem to care about that too much. His his eye is on the prize and he's just trying to acquire anything that can make him some money so he can support his family. And as the rest of the hunters clear out the dungeon, they arrive at a boss door. This massive scary looking boss door, these people have no idea what's in store for them. Most portals are very cut and dry. They're given a rank anywhere from E to S. You go in, you kill all the monsters, there's a boss containing the best items, you kill him and then you can leave the portal, the portal closes. But for some reason, this dungeon has this massive door and this massive figure in this huge hallway. This creepy statue plays a very large role in the continuity of the story. Don't worry, I won't spoil any of that for you, but you'll definitely not forget this great statue as all of the other smaller statues begin to come alive and these heroes or hunters quickly realize that the area that they're in is way higher level than it should be. Something about this portal is not right and now they're fighting for their lives. 
The statues in this huge chamber begin to come alive, and they're insanely powerful, probably S rank or even higher. They start to one-shot and kill all of the hunters, and the rest who are trying to fight for their lives scream in complete terror. And that's pretty much the end of the first episode, leaving you on a cliffhanger. It was really not that long of a first episode, but boy, did they do it justice. I really, after seeing the trailers, did not expect much from this series, but I was pleasantly surprised. The creator unfortunately of solo leveling has passed away, and I believe it was partly due to overwork. The chapters of the manhwa were coming out like every week or two, and they were these super long, super beautiful colored chapters. If you haven't read solo leveling, if you're an anime only, I suggest you give reading solo leveling a try, because I just fell in love with the manhwa so quickly, especially when you get about a third of the way through the series, it really starts to pop off big time. My recommendation is to give this series a chance. Even if you don't like reading manga, if you just want to watch the anime, check this out. It has potential to be anime of the year, and I'm so surprised with how well Studio A1 Pictures has done with this. This first episode was incredibly clean in all aspects. Hopefully they can keep up the entirety of the series in this quality, but I assume they probably did. The next episode is going to be crazy, and then about halfway through season one, it's going to start getting really, really good. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys because solo leveling is an adventure. There's something miraculous about this story in that if you've ever been a fan of anything RPG related, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, or you just love power fantasy in general, placing yourself in the shoes of the main character Sung becomes exhilarating. You feel yourself become this character, and as he grows, you grow with him as the audience member. But there's plenty of twists and turns in this story, tons of mysteries to be revealed, and if you've never read or heard of solo leveling, boy are you in for a roller coaster. But most of all, what this series does best is the sheer excitement of seeing the character of Sung grow. Almost every chapter has a battle, there's not really any slow moments in the series. It's continual fun and progression with every chapter and episode, and you'll see that as this series progresses. The series is scheduled to have 24 episodes, and it appears that chapter 1 and episode 1 went hand in hand. So 24 episodes, we will begin to see some of the more exciting parts of this series. But we'll have to get to about episode 10 for you to truly understand where this series is going. Because you may see Sung now and think, oh great, another anime with just some weakling, but boy, you have no idea what's coming. In one respect, it is similar to One Punch Man with the different ranked heroes. But in another respect, it's the opposite of One Punch Man, which really focuses a lot on the s rank heroes and their backstories. Instead, this anime, or this story of solo leveling focuses more on the main character than anyone else. And while it does embellish on some of the other characters, you can't help but root for the main character in every one of his battles. Episode 1 was delightful. I would literally give it a 10 out of 10. I have zero criticisms. You guys have to watch this show, and hopefully this video performs well because I would really like to review this on an episode-by-episode -episode basis. I love solo leveling. It's a fantastic, fun story that I highly encourage you to get into. I'm Mastar. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to leave a thumbs up and comment down below, and I will see you guys soon for some more solo leveling.